Hi, I'm Ruben from RespShop.com, an online retailer for everything CPAP here in Redmond, Washington. Today, I'm doing another CPAP 101 video, this time with seven hot tips to make mask leaks a thing of the past. We have lots more content like this on our channel too, so subscribe for more CPAP advice. Thanks. Now, on to the tips. Tip number one is for those that only occasionally experience mask leaks. Sometimes leaks can be caused by wrinkles in the mask cushion. And these can form when you move around at night. Air then escapes from the cushion through those wrinkles. The fix for this is simple. First, turn off the air pressure. Then pull the mask away from your face, raise it, and then re-secure it to your face. If necessary, repeat the process and move the mask around a little on your face until the wrinkles flatten out. This simple action should allow the cushion to reform and get a better seal. Once done, you can turn the pressure back on. Tip two is to make sure your mask and skin are clean before you start therapy. Oils from your skin make the seal less effective and they build up on the mask cushion over time as well. If you have a clean face and a clean mask cushion, the seal will be much better. For a video about cleaning your mask, see the card above me or the link in the description. Tip number three is to make sure you're putting on the mask correctly. Different masks are designed to be put on differently. For example, some manufacturers advise putting on the headgear first before then positioning the cushion. Others recommend it in the reverse way. Putting on the mask correctly will help ensure a better seal. Check the user manual you received or the online versions we have listed on respshop.com to see what the manufacturer of your mask recommends. The manual may also recommend mask specific methods to try when experiencing mask leaks as well. So look out for these two. Tip number four is to check the sizing of your headgear and mask, especially if you experience regular leaks every night. You can use a size guide to find out what size you should be using for your mask and cushion. And don't be afraid to mix and match different sizes of mask and headgear if the results are a better fit that way. A snug fit is essential to a good seal. If you have questions about what size mask you should choose, get in touch with our knowledgeable team at respshop.com. Number five is especially important if you have a mask that used to be fine, but has now started to regularly leak. In that case, it is probably because some parts of the mask need to be replaced. Over time, cushions degrade, masks develop cracks, and headgear loses its tension. All of these result in leaks. At respshop.com, we recommend changing your cushion every two to three months, and your mask and headgear every six to 12 months to ensure the seal stays strong. Tip six is to make sure you have the right type of mask for you. There are many different styles of masks and each style has its benefits and drawbacks. A couple practical examples of when switching mask styles could help. Let's say you are someone who tends to sleep on your back and you are using a full face mask like this one I have here. Now, oftentimes the lower jaw can relax when you fall asleep and this can break the seal of a full face mask. In that case, switching to a nasal mask would prevent this. Or perhaps you have a full face mask that used to seal perfectly when you were clean shaven, but since growing out that glorious beard of yours, you've noticed a drop off in the quality of your sleep. Well, it could be that your new facial hair is preventing the mask cushion from getting that good seal around your mouth like it used to. If that was the case, switching to a nasal pillow mask would solve that issue. Last but not least, tip seven is to adjust your headgear's tension. The mask fit should not be either too tight or too loose, and you should always adjust the paired straps at the same time, ensuring an even adjustment on both sides. If the fit is too tight, it can lead to sore skin and also mask leaks as it makes the cushion extra prone to wrinkling. However, some masks are actually designed to be worn more loosely, such as Fisher & Paykel's Viterra, Eson 2 and Bravida masks. On the other hand, for a lot of masks, loose straps means the seal gets breached when the pressure gets to higher levels. To check the fit of your mask that you're using, test it at therapy pressure levels, perhaps using a mask leak test if your device supports one. If your device doesn't have a built-in mask leak test, then a manual way to check the seal is to take the palm of your index finger and your middle finger on both of your hands and touch the skin under the straps on either side. You should be able to fit both fingers under the strap. If you can't, then the seal is too tight. 
And if you can fit more than two fingers like this, then it's too loose. However you test your mask seal, make sure you're not testing it at the starting ramp pressure before you sleep, as the seal may be sufficient at the lower pressure, but it could then fail when the pressure therapy is increased to its maximum therapy pressure. So there are my top seven tips for preventing mask leaks. A good habit to get into to consciously measure the quality of the mask seal each night is to ensure that the mask is quiet when you first lie down and start therapy. And bear in mind that you may need to adjust the straps throughout the night to prevent leaks as your body changes positions while you sleep. If you found these tips helpful, please like the video as a way to say thanks. We appreciate it. And until next time, friends, sleep tight. Unless, of course, you have a Fisher & Paykel mask. In that case, sleep a little looser. Bye-bye for now.